Hello and welcome to Math Simplified. In this video, we will talk about the polymerase chain reaction. In simple words, polymerase chain reaction or PCR is a technique that is used to make several copies of a small fragment of DNA or RNA. If we understand the meaning of the words in PCR, we can better tell about this process from its name itself. PCR is made up of two words, polymerase and chain reaction. Polymerase means an enzyme that makes polymers of any other molecule, which in this technique is the DNA. Chain reaction is a type of chemical reaction which progresses in an exponential way. Or in simple terms, if the first reaction produces two molecules, the second reaction will make four and the third will make 16 copies and then 32, 64, 128, 512 copies and so on. So in a matter of just a few hundred reactions, we can produce billions of copies of a single fragment of DNA. Before progressing further, make sure to watch the video on structure of DNA and DNA replication on our channel for a better understanding of this topic, as many of the terms that we will use in this video have been discussed in those topics. Also, I am so excited to share with you that we have launched our new t-shirt store on teespring.com. Featuring cool tees that medical students and professionals can relate to. We are still adding more designs on our store. Support Med Simplified by checking us out on Teespring. The next question you would ask is why would we want to make a billion copies of a region of DNA? Well, PCR has thousands of uses like in diagnosing infections and infectious diseases. For example, it is used to diagnose infections by viruses. We take blood of a patient that has been infected by the virus and then we amplify the DNA of the virus so that we are able to study which type of virus it is and its properties. Similarly, PCR is being used in hundreds of other fields like crime investigations, genetic research, molecular biology, etc. Now let's first talk about what are the things that we need to perform PCR and then we will discuss how this process happens. The most commonly used equipment in PCR is the thermal cycler, also known as the PCR machine. Inside the PCR machine, we have these small tubes in which all the chemicals are inserted and the reaction takes place. Now let's look at the stuff that we put inside these tubes that makes this reaction possible. The key ingredients of a PCR reaction are tag polymerase, primers, DNA templates and the nucleotides. Tag polymerase is a type of DNA polymerase and like DNA replication in any organism, PCR requires a DNA polymerase enzyme that makes new strands of DNA using existing strands as templates. The DNA polymerase typically used in PCR is called tag polymerase after the heat tolerant bacteria from which it was isolated named Thermus aquaticus. This bacteria lives in hot springs and its DNA polymerase is very heat stable and it is most active around 70 degrees. This heat stability is ideal as high temperatures are needed for this reaction. The second important thing that we need to perform PCR are the primers. If you have watched the videos on DNA replication, you know that DNA polymerase needs primers to start the reaction as the polymerase cannot initiate this reaction but can only propagate it. PCR primers are short sequences of nucleotides, usually around 20 nucleotides in length. Primers provide a starting point for DNA synthesis. Primers are also important as they help to select the exact portion of DNA that will be amplified. And we use two such primers in each PCR reaction and they are designed so that they isolate the target region of the DNA to be copied. DNA template is the segment of original DNA which we want to amplify. And nucleotides, as we already know, are the basic building blocks used for DNA synthesis. Now we will discuss about the process of PCR. PCR involves three simple steps. Denaturation, annealing and extension. In the first step of polymerase chain reaction, we raise the temperature of the machine to 96 degrees Celsius. This is done to denature or separate the two strands of DNA. So as a result of this step, we get two separate strands of DNA. 
The next type of PCR is known as annealing. Before getting into the details, do you know the meaning of the word annealing? Basically, this word was used in the metal industry where they heat a certain metal to a higher temperature and then cool it. This process is called annealing which is basically done to remove the internal defects from the metal. Same is the case here in PCR where we first raise the temperature of the machine to 72 degrees for the step 1 that is denaturation and then we cool the temperature to 55 degrees so that the primers in the PCR tube can bind to their target sequence on the single stranded DNA. Now let me explain the concept of annealing with a real world example. Suppose a patient comes to you and you suspect an HIV infection. We take the blood sample of the patient and perform PCR on it. The blood of the patient contains the virus and in the virus is its genetic material, the DNA. So our aim here is to confirm whether the patient has the infection or not. But the DNA of the virus in our sample is a very little quantity. So you can say that we need to amplify the DNA of the virus to detect it. So we perform the first step of PCR that is denaturation to separate the two strands of the DNA. This is the denatured DNA of the virus in our sample and in green we have a specific sequence or gene that we have decided to amplify and detect later. Next comes annealing and the role of primers. We will use two primers which are basically used to mark the specific area of the DNA that we want to amplify. The primers have the sequence that matches the sequence which is present at the starting point of the target region of these two strands of DNA. The primers bind to the template DNA by complementary base pairing. In this way, we are able to select a particular region of the DNA that we want to amplify. So this was annealing. Next comes the third step known as extension. For this, we also require free nucleotides in these test tubes, which will be basically used to make the new DNA. Again, we have a detailed video about the structure of nucleotides on our channel and link is in the description. For extension, we increase the temperature again to 72 degrees so that the tag polymerase extends the primers, synthesizing new strands of DNA. Here you can see the tag polymerase adding new nucleotides to the short sequence of the primer to form new strands of DNA, which is complementary to the original strand. These ingredients are assembled in a tube along with cofactors needed by the enzyme and are put through repeated cycles of heating and cooling that allows new DNA to be synthesized. So what was the result of this single cycle of heating and cooling and then heating again? You can see that from one DNA fragment we got two new double stranded DNAs. One is the original parent DNA and the other one is a new DNA formed by the tag polymerase. These steps are repeated again and this is what that makes the PCR a chain reaction. Basically, the products of the first reaction are used as the substrates for the next reaction. Now when we cool down the temperature to 55 degrees for annealing, we will get four single stranded DNAs now. The tag polymerase comes in for extension and this time it leads to synthesis of four new single stranded DNAs because the substrates for the enzyme are also double now. So from the second cycle of the PCR, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 new strands of DNA. These steps are repeated again and again and this is what that makes the PCR a chain reaction. To summarize, basically the products of the first reaction are used as the substrate for the next reaction. Which means that if in the first reaction we got 2 DNA out of 1, in the second reaction we will get 4 DNAs out of 2 and in the third reaction we will get 16 out of 4 and similarly by a few hundred reactions we are able to get billions of copies of the same fragment of DNA. This is repeated 25 to 30 times in a typical PCR reaction not 100 times which takes 2 to 4 hours depending upon the length of the DNA region being copied. Due to the exponential nature of the chain reaction we are able to produce billions of copies of DNA fragment from only a single copy of the fragment. After this the temperature is again lowered to 15 degrees so that the products of the reaction can be stored. To check whether the PCR has generated the correct products, we use a technique known as agarose gel electrophoresis, which is a topic for another video. 
So this is how the process of PCR takes place. In the end, I would like to say that PCR is an amazing technique that has revolutionized the field of diagnosis and research. One of the most frequent questions that I get asked here on YouTube is how to remember what you study. I agree that biology and medicine involve remembering a lot of factual information and one of the things that helped me immensely during medical college were flashcards. That's why Med Simplified has teamed up with Quizlet to release our brand new collection of flashcards on biology and medicine. Quizlet is a new online learning platform where you can study easy to remember flashcards by me and thousands of other teachers worldwide. All Med Simplified flashcards are easy to understand and contain a lot of images that help you to remember difficult topics easily. What makes Quizlet great is that you can use it on Android or iOS anywhere you want, which makes it super helpful to revise and remember a lot of volatile topics right before an exam. Become a Med Simplified member on Patreon.com to unlock all the flashcards from our videos and also unlock some cool Patreon-only member content like exclusive discounts on Med Simplified merchandise, choosing the topic for the next video and early notifications and behind the scenes of these videos. Thank you so much for watching guys. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more cool stuff. See you in the next video.